Bitcoin gets down to this kind of 20% level, every time it's got here over the last, well, since Bitcoin started, it's basically done something between a 70 and 200% rally. And Solana's version of that is volatility down at 50%. Every time it gets there, it has a huge rally. So it, it feels like it's, it's, it's so close. Yeah. Um, it bounced, you know, Solana bounced off that lovely wedge pattern, came off the bottom. Today's a bit weak in Solana, no real reason. And it, it just feels like the next move is, you know, the ripening of the bananas. Real Vision CEO Raul Pal believes that Bitcoin and Solana are up for massive rallies this cycle, and here's why. In his recent podcast, Pal discusses his latest outlook about the exciting future of Bitcoin and Solana based on their past performances. He is focused on the recurring pattern in Bitcoin's market behavior. He notes that every time Bitcoin's volatility drops to around 20%, the cryptocurrency has historically responded with substantial rallies. These rallies, he points out, have ranged from 70% to 200% gains. This observation is significant because it suggests that Bitcoin's market often enters a phase of low volatility before experiencing a strong upward movement. Meanwhile, Pal notes a similar pattern when it comes to Solana. He mentions that Solana's volatility tends to decrease to around 50%, after which the cryptocurrency typically experiences a major rally. Recently, Solana bounced off a wedge pattern, which in technical analysis often signals a potential reversal or continuation of a trend. This bounce off the bottom of the wedge indicates a positive technical sign for Solana. With that being said, let's take a look at some clips from a podcast with Raul Pal. Please take a little moment to show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks and enjoy the video. I think we finished the consolidation period. It's very typical around the halving time, you know, the election cycle. It usually does this and usually finishes in July, maybe August. Um, we also don't forget, if you look at FedNet liquidity, it collapses into the end of every quarter. So that's as people kind of the banks window dress their balance sheets. So we saw FedNet liquidity come off very sharply. Today should be the last day, and then it gets rebuilt again. So whether that affects assets as well, even though it's quite well flagged in advance, possible. Um, but overall, I think the price structure of what everything looks like, it, it, it looks like we hit the base. Yeah, we, you know, Solana, I'm looking at the chart Solana. In April, we came down to just below 120, came to 118. We then rallied up, back down, formed this wedge perfect pattern. My guess is we just go up from here. I wrote about this in Global Macro Investor a couple of months ago. Uh, my view here is the same as Arthur's, who's also a GMI subscriber, but um, I think we're being set up by the BOJ for a nice spectacular bit of shenanigans. BOJ are very clever at what they do. They've been doing manipulating FX markets forever, and everybody loses money um, trying to fight them. My guess is they're sucking in the last positioning now. They are Chinese need money too. The Japanese banks are the euro dollar market. They're the largest participants in the euro dollar market now. They're short of dollars, which was the point. Yeah. Somewhere the US is going to give them infinite line to be able to intervene. And that will flow back through the banks, both into treasuries and also to China who desperately need the dollars, and the Fed don't want to give them a direct liquidity line. So if there's a source of instant shocking liquidity that can come, the most perfect setup would be the Fed cut. Japanese intervene. That would just nuke everybody. And I've seen the Japanese do this many times before, and they tend to do it with the approval of the Fed, because that way you get a uh, bang for your buck. We know that Yellen's been in China tw twice. So you know, Yellen is the world's biggest bond salesman, well, junk bond salesman. She's, she's the Mike Milken of the era. She used to sell those bonds. And the Chinese are saying, we ain't got no dollars to buy your bonds with. It's a really simple equation. And it's like, okay, let's figure this out. How can we get you dollars so you can um, allow your property developers and everybody else to pay their dollar interest debts and you can recycle it into treasuries? And I think it's via Japan. Generally speaking, the market's fixated and dollar yen's going to 200, 300. Oh my God, it's collapsing. They've lost control. Okay, so that's where the current narrative is. And people expect intervention at some point soon. They're waiting for it. It's really going to be about the size of intervention because if they go big, it shows they've got the backing. And then you'll see it, whether it's 
versus the foreign central bank reverse repo or via the the swap lines or what, whatever the mechanism is. Yeah. Don't forget, a lot of the time they try and hide the mechanisms as well. That's what I mean. So yeah. it's really the size that they go in. If one day we wake in, we come in and Dolly ends down one and a half percent, and then it happens again the following day, you know it's on. Yeah. And, you and that's just a net injection of liquidity into the system in massive size from the from the Japanese. There's RSI divergence. It's all kind of stacking up to the, you know, the, the BOJ actually use technical analysis. They're pretty good at doing this kind of stuff as well. So let's see. Um, but the dollar is the dollar is too tight, and it reminds me quite a lot of of ninety eight. Uh, was it ninety seven, ninety eight? Everybody was was um, long dollar yen. I mean, in gigantic size, one of the biggest trades the world had ever seen. And uh, the Japanese intervened. Everyone's like, yeah, no big deal. And then the thing utterly collapsed. I mean, Tiger management, all of these guys got completely carried out, apart from Paul Tudor Jones who managed to get it right. The other thing we need to think about is, <laughs> obviously, after last night's debate, the probability of Biden being swapped out is extremely high. So who is that going to be? And how is that going to impact our playing field here? You know, it feels that Newsom is the one that's being positioned, but who the hell knows? Could be anything. Newsom being California, probably pro-tech mm. uh, in a more meaningful way. I think, you know, I think the Biden administration has managed to lose all of the big tech founders to Trump, which is an extraordinary. They're yeah. all Democrat voters and they've yeah. all gone to the other side. Newsom, maybe he can pull them back. Um because, you know, don't forget, it was Newsom who was organizing Xi to come and meet them in, in California. That's a whole other story. But there's, um, I don't know, that, that's the thing we all need to think about is what is the probability that Newsom is pro-crypto. In other news, renowned crypto analyst Michael Van de Pop predicts a bullish reversal for Bitcoin, despite its recent struggles. In a recent post on X, he suggested that Bitcoin might dip further before recovering significantly. Van de Pop notes that a reversal could occur when Bitcoin reaches the $60,000 level, a point he believes will trigger a bullish divergence. He also highlighted the potential approval of a US spot Ethereum ETF by the SEC, expected to happen next week as a catalyst for a Bitcoin price rally. The potential approval of the US spot Ethereum ETF is seen as a major event that could boost market sentiment. Analysts speculate that this approval could enhance institutional interest and overall investor confidence in the cryptocurrency market, benefiting Bitcoin's price alongside Ethereum. This development is anticipated to positively impact the market, potentially driving Bitcoin's price higher. Concerns about Bitcoin miners selling their holdings have also been addressed. James Butterfill, head of research at CoinShares, argues that these fears are overstated. Despite miners selling over 1 billion worth of Bitcoin this year, Butterfield points out that this only represents 1% of total Bitcoin held, which is relatively minor compared to 2% in 2018 and 2015. This analysis suggests that the impact of miners' sell-offs on the market is not as significant as initially feared. Currently, as of making this video, Bitcoin is trading at 61,565 with a slight increase and its trading volume has decreased by 12.6% to 22.48 billion over the past 24 hours. Now, let's get back to what Raul Pal has to say. I'm putting out a video, um, probably go out today, uh, which was just showing all of the relative things that I'm looking at for this, yeah. uh, why I think the trade is on. And the Solana Bitcoin chart is super clear. It's a beautiful stair-step consolidation, stair-step consolidation, same with the ETH one. So again, they all hit the bottom of the wedge, triangle, channel, all of the you know, relative continuation patterns, goes higher. And if it does, then we've got another big outperformance to come from Solana. So I just think, you know, if the space is going to get liquidity, the further out the risk curve gets more. Solana's got all the narrative and a real huge amount of traction. And we still haven't got Firedancer out yet. So... Yeah. There's a there's a lot here. Um, I think it's very difficult to beat Solana this cycle. Just super difficult. Even if ETH manages to find a massive use case, it's it's suddenly, you know, YouTube is being tokenized on Ethereum. It's still going to be very difficult to beat the uh, to beat the narrative and the momentum that's currently behind Solana. Global liquidity has been flat. That tells us no new liquidity. 
The business cycle hasn't really turned positive. That tells you earnings aren't being yet being reinvested or you know, people aren't making money. So you're kind of stuck in this, this no man's land for now. And the next one will be the ETH ETF. So that'll be new money into crypto land. Mm. And then we can all play with that money for a bit. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's basically how it is. We need to think of it as this is a crypto land economy. And for crypto land economy to grow, we need foreign direct investment or even hot money flows. Either way, we need fresh capital in. The liquidity cycle finishes around the summer, I peaks. But many times, usually, the crypto market doesn't peak until the end of the year. So could it peak earlier? Peak? I, I don't know, and I, and I don't want to play for that. One thing just about the rate cuts is we don't need rate cuts for this. It's liquidity that drives it. Right. Rate cuts are actually a delayed a delay on yep. the liquidity that happened ages ago. So if we go back to 1994-5, we had the big hike in rates, the bond market freaked out, everyone thought we were going to go into recession. We didn't have a recession. The Fed cut in 95, 25 basis points, then a 50. Rates were still miles higher than the low from 1993. And um, the Fed was on hold until 1998, until the Asian crisis. That was the strongest period of outperformance in market history. So I just like stability is fine as long as there's liquidity. All of our forward-looking stuff just says the business cycle improves from here. And so there's a bit of chopping around, a bit of noise. Everything says it improves, which is kind of what we should expect into macro summer. Um, we don't need it to go lower. We don't need to do anything. It's been below 50 for a long time now, one of the longest periods ever, much like the yield curve has been inverted. So no, I think it gets stronger, and that's a good thing. It brings earnings back into the economy. Those earnings get recycled into crypto. When people are feeling more secure in their jobs and all of that, and they're earning a bit more, or their local business is earning more, money gets recycled. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just positive on that. Pal mentions that all forward-looking indicators suggest that the business cycle is set to improve from this point onward. Despite some fluctuations and noise in the data, the overall trend is expected to be positive. He expects this improvement to align with the concept of a macro summer, a period where economic conditions are favorable. This implies that the economy won't need to decline further and can instead begin to recover. Finally, as earnings improve and people feel more secure in their jobs or businesses, the additional income is likely to be reinvested, including into cryptocurrencies. Pal believes that when the economy is doing better, people have more disposable income and are more inclined to invest in assets like crypto. Now guys, if you're watching this video, you're clearly interested in crypto. If you want to stay most up to date on the crypto and Bitcoin world, make sure to subscribe to my daily five minute crypto newsletter. It gives the latest expert predictions, any breaking news and top on chain analysis all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description to join over 60,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. Anyway guys, that's all for today's video. I hope it brought you some value. I'll see you all in the next one. And as always, all the best.